The second Friday of March, a new wave of purge swept across the royal court as Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman arrested senior members of the Saud family, including the king's full brother and a former Crown Prince. The son of Salman has once again bared his teeth to show his dogged determination to remove all potential obstacles to his power. Among the Friday detainees, the most prominent was Prince Ahmed bin Abdulaziz, the younger brother of King Salman. As one of the only three members of the Allegiance Council, the body responsible for determining future succession to the throne of Saudi Arabia, bin Abdulaziz opposed bin Salman becoming Crown Prince in June 2017. In late 2018, he was captured criticizing the Saudi king and his Crown Prince for the Yemen war. Another outstanding prince arrested was Mohammed bin Nayef, the former Saudi Crown Prince. He was also the kingdom's interior minister from 2012 to 2017 and controlled the country's three armed forces, along with the military and the National Guard. Bin Nayef was ousted by bin Salman in 2017 and practically went under house arrest since then. Mohammed bin Salman now is getting stronger and stronger. The Americans are fully behind him. Uh, he cemented his power in the state institutions uh, within Saudi Arabia, and he's genuinely on his way to become king of Saudi Arabia. Because of these circumstances, members of the royal family who are not happy with Mohammed bin Salman believe that the window of opportunity to prevent bin Salman from becoming king is increasingly closing. And this is why there are rumors of a potential coup. Now, Mohammed bin Nayef uh, is the former crown prince. Mohammed bin Nayef is the only real rival who could possibly challenge Mohammed bin Salman. His nephew is the interior minister, the son of his brother, which is a close link. And it is believed perhaps that Mohammed bin Salman believed that Mohammed bin Nayef might use this state institution in order to force himself. Both princes, along with a dozen of other members of the Saudi royal court, are under arrest, reportedly on a charge of treason. That's why accusing royal family members of disloyalty has now become a trademark of bin Salman. Back in 2017, he locked up hundreds of Saudi princes and billionaires in the Ritz-Carlton Hotel on charges of disloyalty and corruption. Fact check one. How much did bin Salman get from the Ritz-Carlton detainees in exchange for their release? $194 billion, twice the cost of the Yemen war, up to March 2018. This purge is significant because it shows that Mohammed bin Salman uh, is becoming stronger, but it also shows that not all of the family members of Al Saud are happy with Mohammed bin Salman's antics. That Mohammed bin Salman still believes that there are threats within the family that need to be purged, that need to be uh, uh, attacked, that need to be silenced. Uh, even within the royal family. And I think this says a lot about the inner state of Saudi Arabia. It doesn't suggest that bin Salman is weak, but it does suggest that the nature of his rule over Al Saud is one of force. He has been unable to convince the family, so he has had to coerce them. He's had to use the power of the king in order to assert uh, himself. And I think this shows that uh, Mohammed bin Salman believes that until he becomes king, he's not entirely secure. He is secure, but not as secure as he would be uh, if he was king. And I think this is the significance of this particular purge. In an interview with The Guardian, 
A former Saudi diplomat, on condition of anonymity, said the recent purge was part of a systematic approach to eliminating opponents, as bin Salman's accession is drawing near. Using the Arabic word Bani, meaning tribe, he said, "So MBS has gone for the Bani Abdullah, Bani Fad, and Bani Sultan. Now it's the Bani Nayef. There's still a son of Saudi bin Nayef, Mohammed bin Nayef's brother." At the General Intelligence Presidency, he'll have to go too. This is like Baghdad in the 1960s. An allusion to a palace coup launched by Saddam Hussein in the late 60s, when he purged Iraq's monarchy and secured his foothold as the country's strongman for more than three decades. Fact check two. In addition to being crown prince, what other positions is Mohammed bin Salman serving at Saudi Arabia? The kingdom's deputy prime minister, chairman of the Council for Economic and Development Affairs, chairman of the Council of Political and Security Affairs, and minister of defense. So much power and no harness have made out of the young, ambitious prince a brutal, dangerous ruler with zero tolerance for the slightest criticism. That intolerance was reflected in its most horrendous form in the killing and hacking of Jamal Khashoggi, a Saudi journalist and a mild critic of the prince. Despite the worldwide outcry after the Khashoggi murder, according to Human Rights Watch, the kingdom has continued under bin Salman to pursue harsh measures against its critics, from travel bans and harassment to arrest, torture, and death sentences. Mohammed bin Salman's latest purge is quite different from its first one in 2017. Back then, many regarded him as a young, brave reformer, but now he has ended up with a pile of scandals on his track record, from waging war on Yemen, the poorest country in the region, to hacking the mobile phone of the richest man in the world. Fact check three: How much is MBS popular among the people in the U.S. and the region? Informed by some Saudi insiders, the Middle East Eye has written that bin Salman's purge against his uncle and others is aimed at clearing the path to becoming king prior to the G20 summit due to be held in Riyadh in November. The timing is significant because、uh, when you look at Saudi Arabia, bin Salman has been trying to lay low. He has been trying. To take Saudi Arabia out of the harsh、uh, press limelight, and also Saudi Arabia is hosting the G20 this year, so Bin Salman would not have wanted to bring、uh, this bad press towards Saudi Arabia, which leads to the suggestion that something must have happened to force Bin Salman to act in this way. And there are two possible scenarios. The first is that the king is very ill, and therefore Bin Salman、uh, is worried that if the king dies, the family will not allow a smooth transition. For him to become king, and the second is that there was a genuine、uh, information about a coup attempt. Bin Salman's palace coup came amid the novel coronavirus outbreak, which has resulted in a marked drop in the price of oil, the main source of the Saudi income, without which the crown prince's ambitious plans will not be implemented. That, in addition to the recent disagreement with Russia over cutting down production, also the young prince is under fire for his unilateral decision to halt the annual pilgrimage to Mecca in response to the viral epidemic. That's why he has allowed a big concert entitled Persian Night to go ahead as part of the Tantura Winter Festival on the 5th of March. Initial signs of nervousness are going to appear on the face of the Saudi crown prince. As are gaping cracks in the Saudi royal court, the prince seeks to consolidate his power before it's too late, no matter how much it would cost. حادث اللي حدث مؤلم جدا لجميع السعوديين